Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today we're going to dive into the model info window. So model info, we've been we've been in these Square One videos running through all the little the side windows that exist in the panel, the, the tab bar if you're on, on Windows and the those little stacked panels on Mac. Model info is a little bit different. It's not something you interact with regularly. It's kind of the data that is saved and makes up your model. So uh, it, it's not like um, your presets necessarily. It's not your template, which you've talked about before. This is actually the data that is saved in your model. It's kind of the base default information. Um, I don't know. That's kind of a weird introduction, but let's dive in and we'll take a look at what it actually is right now. Okay, so I have the model info window here, uh, info window open right here. It is under Windows, so it's it's right here, model info, but it doesn't work like the other windows. It's not going to snap into the tab bar or the, the floating windows. It is kind of its own thing. It's generally not something you keep up all the time and change regularly. It's more something you would pull up to check data about a current model. Like if you get this model from someone else, you can check the data that it was saved with. Or if you want to make a change from the template information, so say I want to change my units or something from what was saved in the template, you would hop in here to model info. So not something you have up all the time, but uh, uh, kind of a, a select window that you have when you need it. So I'm just going to take a real quick buzz down here, and we're just going to touch on each one. Probably not dive super deep into them, uh, but some of the other videos we'll see in the future will probably refer back to some of this. All right, so when you pull up the model info, you do have this tab list over on the side. It is alphabetical, so you know it goes A to U. Um, the first one up here is animation. So in animation, it just says as you animate, so when you switch from one scene to the next, how long is that gonna take? So right now it's saying it's gonna take two seconds. If you play through the animation, if you go up to view and hit animate and run through all the scenes, uh, this, this pause time, the scene delay, is how long it's going to stop on a scene before going to the next one. So two ways you would play this. I have mentioned this in other videos. A lot of times if I'm working on a model, I'll save my scenes to jump the cameras to certain locations and I'll turn scene transitions off because as I tap to a scene, I just want to jump immediately to that scene. If you're showing your 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 you know model off to somebody, you might want to keep that transition on and even make it a little longer than only two seconds, so you know it sweeps through the model and shows you know gets the most out of of what you're looking at that kind of thing. So the these are the default values for the animations. Uh, classifications is something that I don't actually have anything loaded in this, but if I wanted to import like IFC uh, names something like that, a default classification. Um, setup, I could actually import that here and it would show that that is saved in here. So then when I go in to name my components, I actually have the ability of assigning a classification based on the defaults loaded right here. Components. This has a couple things. One, I'm going to jump to the bottom and show this real quick. This says show component axes. If I turn this on, you'll see that my components, so Sumele is a component and this little cylinder here is a component. As I turn them on, they get these little floating axes right next to them that just shows where they are centered so where that where that placement point is for each component the other two uh editing display says do i want to see similar components when i edit one do i see the rest of the model when i edit one so these two guys right here are components if i pick one of them you'll notice that everything else kind of grays out so this is actually controlled by these two sliders. So I do have the option of hiding similar components. If that's turned on, then any copies of the cylinder are going to disappear when I go to edit this. And then I have hide rest of model. If I hide it, everything that's not a cylinder disappears. I can turn on both of these two. So if I, as soon as I open a component, everything goes away. If I don't want to have it go away, I can choose to have it fade. So if I want, so if I look here, this is this is the cylinders of the copy. I can choose how much I want it to fade away. And then same thing with everything else in the model. How much do I want that to go away? And the fade isn't really, it's not a transparency. It's more of a colored mask that goes on there. Fading 100% gives real light lines and then just basic shadows. All the rest of the textures disappear. 
Um, so you can choose how, you know, how much you want it to fade away, how much I want it to look like something different, where what you actually are editing is going to get full color, full lines, that kind of thing. Credits is how you can actually claim credit for the model or for pieces of the model. So each component can get claimed, have a claim credit, um, and you can claim the credit for your model if you're going to take it and do something like publish it to 3D Warehouse. So you can come in here, claim credit, use your information that you're logged in with to actually put your name on this model. And then when somebody downloads it from 3D Warehouse, they can actually see that you're the one who created it. Dimensions and text. I'm just going to show you, we're not going to go through line by line, but um, for dimensions and text, these are the default values that are going to get used when you create dimensions or place text. So this is leader text or screen text. Um, these are the values you're going to get used. These are the values you're going to get used for dimensions. We talked about these a little bit in those other dimension and text uh, videos, but just a reminder, they are here in model info. All right, file. This is basic, basic information. Two things are in here. Uh, general information, where was this file saved? How big was the file? And then you can add a name and description, just like you'd see on an individual component, but it's for the whole file. And this is just text fields that you can just type your information into. Also in here is this default alignment for uh, components. When I create components, do I want to set a default glue to? Um, do I want to have it cut openings? That's sort of, this is kind of the default information about component this this model as a component when it is placed. Most people think of models as being a collection of components, that sort of thing. But remember, a component is just an SKP file that's imported into SketchUp. So what you can do is when your model is fixed, when this is created, you can actually import it as a component into another SketchUp model. And when it does, this is the information that will get used. It will get treated as a component. And then these are basically your component options. Similar to the way this, the name description, like I said, works just like it does in a regular component. All right, geolocation. If this model is geolocated, this is where it is located. Um, this just hooks directly into geolocation. There's some options and information about it. Rendering, don't get too excited. This is actually if you want to use anti-aliasing in your screen display or not. I can turn this on and off and uh, it'll get me you know, smoother or rougher uh, rendering on screen. Not, not talking about photorealistic rendering, V-Ray or anything like that. This is just saying, uh, do I want to use anti-alias textures on the screen or do I want to turn that off? That's all it is. Statistics. This is probably one of the most commonly used windows by me anyhow, or tabs by me when I come in and use model info. What this is going to show is the data of what this model is made up of. So you can see with this, this model, I got just a couple things here, but I have 14,000 edges, five, almost 6,000 faces, three components, three groups. Um, so I can actually see uh, component definitions, tags, materials, styles. All this stuff is in here and basically this is how big a model is so when you look at a model how big it is on the screen like geographically is it one inch across is it two miles across that really doesn't matter too much what really matters is this information how much of this stuff is in the model if a model's big you're gonna have lots of numbers in here um, if a model is small tight and easy to work with it's going to be a lower number uh, it does have options in here like fix problems and purge unused. Fix problems will go through and, and any name problems or geometry problems that have been created, it will try to find them and eliminate them. And then purge unused just says run through my model and any, any of this stuff that's not actually being used. So if I have empty tags or have components that I imported that I didn't actually use, colors that I put on something or replaced with something else so they're extra colors, just get rid of all that. If you're having issues ever with models being too big, too slow, too heavy, too whatever, too much, Purge Unused is a great way to get rid of extra data you don't need in a model. We talked about text earlier. And then the last thing, of course, is units. And this is kind of a big deal, especially if you're switching units between people. Um, if somebody else models something and they pass it to you to work on, maybe they like to model in millimeters, you like to model in inches, not a big deal because you can actually just switch it. So you have some defaults here, architectural, decimal, engineering, or fractional. Each of these is basically a template that gives you some basic information here. 
um, but you can go through and change uh, the values if you have um, decimal or architectural. Well, any of them, you can actually change the precision, but for decimal, you can actually go through and change the values for length, area, and volume as well. The other thing in here is length snapping. Um, we have a lot of people have some strong, strong opinions about length snapping. And the general consensus is, you know, especially when you're new to this, you probably want to turn it off so it doesn't force you to snap and, and make some inconsistencies in length, but you have the option to, uh, to do that. Um, as well as some, you know, what do you want to display on the screen? And then your default angle snapping down here too. That was a lot of information. And I know I ran through it kind of quick, but uh, I just wanted to at least touch on everything that's in there. How much you'll use it is really kind of up to you and your workflow and your experience and what you're working on. A lot of people don't go in there and there's some tabs in there that people just never go to. I mean, I don't remember the last time, honestly, that I went to the file tab because I just don't really have need to go see how, where the file was saved. But the information's there if you need it. Um, that's the big thing to remember is if you need information about the model, that's where it is. It's in model info and you can get to it by just clicking on the model info window and uh, going through those tabs. Hope you liked that video. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of them as well as some live streams if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. What's your favorite part of the model info window? And what do you think we should cover on these Square One videos next? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.